Hey everybody, it's Emily from Arg Schooling, and I'm really excited because today I am bringing you the official Build Your Library Grade 10 book list. This has been in the works for about a year now, <laughs> and I am finally at the point where I have finalized the book list. It's, it's done. So to begin, the theme for grade 10 is the first half of world history. So it's going to cover from prehistory, like just a little bit of a prehistory review, through the early Renaissance. It was hard. <laughs> there, was, there is a lot of books. So this is what I have narrowed down for, for grade 10. And I'm really excited for this year. I think it's going to be really fun. So I'm just going to get into it, and we're going to try to do this relatively quickly because, like I said, there are a lot of books. I don't want this to be a 45-minute video, so I'm going to try to be brief. A lot of these books, if you've been watching my channel, you've already heard me talk about them. If you are dying of curiosity and you want to find out more about any of these, you can go back through my past um, reading wrap-ups for the last, like, probably through January is when I started to really focus on reading through all the books, so... You'll hear more about them in those. Without further ado, let's jump right in. Starting with history, the spine texts are the cartoon history of the universe by Larry Gonick, and I'm using the first three. These are fantastic. I've done a full review of them. I will link it. You can watch that if you want to know more, but I love these. To add to those, we are using the Atlas of World History by Patrick O'Brien. This is fabulous. It's huge maps for all different times and places in world history. I think it's really well done. It's succinct. It's not over, overly wordy. It is exactly what it says it is. It is an atlas. We are using it for that purpose. And the last spine book for history is World History in Documents, a comparative reader. And also I want to say that that World Atlas and this book will also carry over into grade 11. This is really nice. This is pr primary documents. And I like that they give you a group of documents from different places on a similar theme. And they give you questions to kind of make you think about them. Really well done. Really interesting. Now I have of course other books because when you're using graphic novels as your spine, you need to add things to make, that, make it more high school level history. I have some books that I have found for that purpose. We're going to read Africa, a biography of the continent by John Reeder. We're not reading the whole book. This is enormous. But I'm picking some of the chapters that I think fit to help to round out the history. And also, there's not much history on Africa to be found, to be honest. It was very hard. I was trying to find things to really round it out and make it a world, global world history instead of just history of the West. So I did find this, and it's it's a little bit dense, but not too dense. I think it, a, a high schooler can handle it. I'm also using the Ancient Near East, a very short introduction. I really like these. They're really short, obviously, but they're just really dense, lots of information, but in a readable format. And I think it's a great introduction to Mesopotamia. We're also going to be using The Woman Who Would Be King by Kara Cooney. I really like the perspective in this book, that it focuses on a woman, hot chipset. It also gives a lot of information about what Egypt was like at that time, so it's really, really interesting. Well done. We're going to read Plutarch's The Life of Alexander the Great. It's exactly what it says it is. It is his life story as told by Plutarch. It is difficult reading, but we want to challenge our high schoolers, don't we? I have 1066, The Year of Conquest by David How Howarth. Howarth? I'm really not sure how you say the name. This is another uh, that I, I appreciate the shorter books because some of the books can be a little bit intimidating, so it's nice to have some shorter nonfiction and fiction mixed in. This gives a really interesting perspective in that it shows you what England was like before the Norman invasion and what it was like directly after, and why it happened. I mean, that was a very important year in world history, in European history especially. And the last history book we'll be reading is A Distant Mirror, The Calamitous 14th Century. Yes, it is a big book, but it's highly readable. It's really interestingly written, and again, we want to challenge our children. 
We want to provide them books that make them think, and I think this is a really interesting look in that time period. So that's the history. We're going to jump right into the science books now. We're going to be using the CK12 biology text. I did a lot of research and I decided that was the best option. One, because it's free. I'm all about inexpensive resources when you can find them, but also it's really well done, I think. I, I really like the layout. I like that it incorporates a lot of videos from Khan Academy and whatnot. It's just it's a really, really la well laid out and solid text. I think that's the best you can ask for. And it's free. I mean, for all the, all the work and effort they put into it, and to have it free is just phenomenal. So these are the books that I'm using to round that text out and make it more of a living resource. So we're going to be using The Curious Naturalist, Nature's Everyday Mysteries by Sam Montgomery. This is a spine we'll be using throughout the whole year. This book is laid out by seasons, so this is the only resource that's going to be specific seasons, but it's easy to change. So if you want to start in the summer, just read the summer section instead of the autumn section and rotate as necessary. It's really not overly complicated to fix it if you feel like it's start, you're starting in the wrong season. Don't worry about that. But I really enjoyed her take on things. I really like Cy Montgomery's writing and just the, the idea of reflecting on nature as a scientist. I think it's a really good, good book. We're going to be reading I Contain Multitudes by Ed Young. This is all about microbes and life in the small. It's one of those readable science books. I really enjoy readable science books because science is not a subject that I feel confident in. I really enjoy science, but I feel like a lot of it's beyond me. So I really enjoy books like this that make it, that bring it to a layman's perspective, but also make it really interesting. And this covers pretty much everything you'd want to know about uh, life on the microbe level. We're also going to be reading Sam Keen's The Violinist's Thumb. This is all about genetics. And I read his book on chemistry a couple years back and really liked it. I can't think of the name of it. Disappearing Spoon, maybe? And I thought that was a really nice resource. We used it in grade 8, I think. Yeah, in grade 8. And so I wanted to incorporate this book because if you enjoyed that, you'll enjoy this. This is all about gen genetics, but it's... um. So much more than that, just as the Disappearing Spoon was all about chemistry and the periodic table, but also so much more than that. So this talks about DNA, genetics, very well done. Climate Changed, A Personal Journey Through Science by Filippe Squarzoni. I really, really loved this book. I think this does a phenomenal job of explaining the science behind climate change in a way that anyone can understand, but while also kind of reflecting on it, like, well, how does this affect me? How does this affect every, every one of us in our personal life, and what can we do about it? So I thought this was just fantastic. I recommend it to everybody. I wanted it to be in grade 10, and luckily it fit. We're going to be reading What a Plant Knows by Daniel Chamovitz, and this is a field guide to the census. This is a weird book, but really interesting, about do plants have feelings? Do plants smell? Do plants see? What, what kind of sensory things do plants have? And this answers that, and it's, again, really readable, really interesting and engaging. And finally, we're going to be reading The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks by Rebecca Skloot. I, I knew from the beginning, the minute I knew we were going to do biology this year, that I was including this book because I've heard nothing but fa fantastic things about it. It's all about the HeLa cells that people have been using for uh, developing medicine and vaccines and where they came from. The HeLa cells came from a person, but nobody really knows anything about Henrietta Lacks. So this is the history of her, basically, and, and the science and the ethics behind what happened to her. Next up, I want to get into our poetry. The poetry this year is going to focus on epics. So we're going to be tackling some heavier books here, so there's not as many. And you're going to tackle them over a longer span of time. So we're going to be reading The Epic of Gilgamesh. I'm not really going to explain a lot about these, I'm just going to kind of run through them. I think if you are watching this video and you have high schoolers, you probably have heard of all of these. So. It's going to run through. We're going to read The Epic of Gilgamesh, which covers ancient Mesopotamia. We're going to read Homer's The Iliad, obviously is ancient Greece. We're going to be reading Julius Caesar, which obviously doesn't take place. It wasn't written in that time, but it's about that time, so. And I really wanted to get in a Shakespeare play. 
every year. So this is the Shakespeare I have chosen and I decided to put it, to pair it in with the poetry because it's very lyrical and poetic. We're going to be reading Beowulf and I like the Seamus Heaney translation. So that's the one I'm going to link. But if really any Beowulf text you can get your hands on is fine. They're all very similar, but I think this is the uh, very readable format for that. And that, of course, is the early Saxon, Dane, Viking type history. We're going to read the Canterbury Tales, but we're not reading all of them. I'm choosing a few to focus on. And finally, we're going to read Sir Gawain, the Green Knight, and Pearl by Tolkien. Well, not by Tolkien. Translated by Tolkien. I just think that's a really readable version of it, and it's he does a very good job with it, I think. Now I'm going to get into the literature. Okay, so I have a lot of books to go through, so again, I'm going to be very brief. You've heard me talk about all of these in the last several months, so we don't need to go into great detail here. Yeah, we're going to read Scythe by Neil Shusterman. His books are phenomenal, really thought-provoking. This one talks a lot about life and death, and what does death mean. Um, I just thought it was a great way to kick off the year. We're going to read Gilgamesh the King by Robert Silverberg. Really, really interesting take on the Gilgamesh epic as history. Like, who was Gilgamesh, really? And he kind of does a lot of interesting things with that story while still maintaining its historical value. Mara, Daughter of the Nile by Eloise Jarvis McGraw. Really interesting spy story that takes place in ancient Egypt, and it's really well done historically. You really get a feel for the time and the place. The Shock of the Fall by Nathan Filer. This one tackles mental illness and I think it does it in a really deep but readable way where it really puts you in the place of somebody with schizophrenia and lets you kind of see what that's like from their perspective which I think is important because so so much of mental illness is stigmatized and nobody wants to talk about it but we need to and I think this is a great way to kind of open that dialogue Next up is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. I loved this book so much. Highly recommend it. This is the Achilles and Patroclus love story. And it's just beautifully written. I, again, fantastic historical fiction. It really gives you a great sense of place while also incorporating a lot of the mythology so while you're there you're also experiencing the the mythological perspective of it and it's just really interesting really well done I really, one of my favorite books of the year next up is the palace of illusions by Chitra Banerjee Divarakuni this is another one that tackles mythology but from India I really love getting to read about different cultures and different places and different mythologies and it was really interesting getting to see a mythology I've never really heard of before, but from a woman's perspective. This book follows Panchali, who is married to five brothers, and the story of the Mahabharat, and it's really, really well done. Next is An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. This is young adult fantasy slash historical fiction. <clears throat> it's definitely fantasy, but it takes a lot of its, its place from ancient Rome. So it feels very much like an ancient Roman story, even though it's not. It's definitely not in our world, and our, but it's familiar. And it was really interesting, and I really loved the main character, and her story was really interesting, and the plot of this book is just really twisty and turny, and you don't really know what's going to happen, and I'm dying to read the sequel. Next is Mother of the Believers by Cameron Pasha. This covers the rise of Islam from the perspective of one of the wives of Muhammad. And again, I, I really love getting the female perspective in there because so often history is very male-centered. So I've done, done a lot to make sure I've incorporated enough books that cover the female perspective as well. And this book is just really interesting. It's a really interesting perspective on the rise of Islam, but also a great way of like visualizing the place. This kind of gives you a view of what the world was like at that time and how a religion like this could come about. Next, I have The Enchantress of the Stars by Sylvia Engdahl. And this book is very interesting science fiction. And it talks a lot about um, what makes people people. What, I just, I found it really interesting and well told. Next we'll be reading Neil Gaiman's Norse Mythology. I love his writing. I loved what he did with the myths. It felt very much like a bard was telling the stories. It felt very much like what you would have heard sitting around the hearth 
in a Norse village and listening to the bard tell stories at night around the fire. I just, I loved this so much. And since we're reading Beowulf, I wanted to incorporate John Gardner's Grendel because I think this book is just such an odd and interesting perspective. I love when you take a story and flip it. And that's exactly what this is. He flipped the story and who was, re who was Grendel really? Who was really the villain in that story and why? And we're reading The Inquisitor's Tale or The Three Magical Children and Their Holy Dog by Adam Gidwitz. And I really enjoyed this. I liked the perspective of the three children. I liked that they were so different from each other and it really gave you an interesting view into that time. I like that the stories are told in a very Canterbury Tales manner where it's a bunch of people sitting around in an inn discussing the stories they know about these three children. I just found it really intriguing, really interesting, a very interesting perspective into tolerating other people's religions, which is another topic that I think is really important to talk about with our children. Then we're going to read Robin McKinley's The Outlaws of Sherwood. This is a Robin Hood retelling. I really liked that this kind of puts Robin in the back seat. He's there, he's a character in the story, obviously, but he's a side character. And it focuses more on the other outlaws in his band. And I really liked that she took the story and put it in history, as in, how did the myth come about? How did this person become this legendary figure? And it just, it read very realistic to me. Like, this is exactly how it could have come about. Finally, the last literature book we'll be reading is Terry Pratchett's Small Gods. I love Terry Pratchett's writing, and I love this book. This is probably my favorite of his books so far that I have read. I love what he does here with religion, with organized religion specifically, and how he kind of makes you stop and take a step back and think about what people really believe and I just I've talked about this book a couple different times in my videos I love it I could talk about it for hours <laughs> but this book is just fantastic I am so excited to share it with my, my teens I think they're gonna get a lot out of it our elective this year we're gonna be focusing we have two electives really maybe three one of the electives this year is it's going to be World Religions and Mythology. We're going to be reading The Illustrated World's Religions, A Guide to Our Wisdom Traditions by Huston Smith. This covers all the ma major religions. We're going to read DK Myths and Legends, Illustrated Guide to Their Origins and Meanings. And this is by Philip Wilkinson. This is a DK book, so it's not overly deep, but it's a great jumping off point for further research. And then we're going to be reading A History of God, The 4,000 Year Quest of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam by Karen Armstrong. And those books are going to cover world religions. For the art this year, we're going to be focusing on drawing, specifically nature drawing. I've been wanting to get this book for ages, so I finally picked it up, and I just, I love it. It's beautifully done. If you've ever wanted to start a nature journal, this is the book you want to get. <laughs> this is, it's very well done, it's very thorough. It covers just about everything you could possibly think of from the actually how to sit down and draw each thing, how to focus, how to observe. So for art this, this year, we're gonna be doing nature journaling. We're gonna use the Laws Guide to Nature Drawing and Journaling. And finally, this is optional. I'm about 50% sure I'm gonna incorporate this. <laughs> in the lesson plans if it doesn't get out of hand, but this is totally optional. One of my sons wants to go into art as a career, so I wanted to give him some sort of a formal art history. And so I got this for him, and I decided if enough people want it, I'll put it in the lesson plans, but it's not, I'm not gonna require it, because it is more, it's more books, and one of them is a little bit expensive. But I'll be using The Story of Art by E. H. Gombrich, and this covers all art history all the way from prehistory and ancient peoples through modern art. It's beautiful, it's full color, full page illustrations of many paintings, and it just looks like a really interesting book. I have, I've only flipped through it a couple of times. I know I'm going to use it with my son, but I just I haven't decided yet overall if it needs to go in the curriculum or not. 
And I also have to go along with that the annotated Mona Lisa, which has a little bit more artwork in it. Really, I couldn't decide between the two, so I got both. <laughs> so, if enough people want that, in addition to the nature journaling art, I can incorporate that in the lesson plans, but I'll leave it as an optional. So that if you don't want to cover that, or you don't feel like it's necessary for you, you don't have to get them. So those are all the books that are going to be in grade 10. I am extremely excited. <laughs> I have still have a lot of work to do, but it will be ready sometime in the next two months. It'll be out before the new school year. So some, I'm thinking at the beginning of August, but it might be more like the second or third week of August. <laughs> we'll see how much I can get done. I'm just really excited about it. I'm excited about all these books. I'm excited to share this stuff with my kids next year. It's going to be a great school year. If you have any questions about grade 10 at all, you can leave them down below and I will get back to you. I'm also going to be linking all of these into my Amazon store, which I will link below for you in the description box. If you want to see any of these books in particular, you can do it that way. And I will be checking in with you guys more as I finish, as my progress comes along, and I will let you know a specific date when I am ready to do that, as far as when it will be ready. Don't ask. <laughs> I will tell you. When, when I let you know, you'll know. It's coming. So thank you for watching, and I will see you guys in my next video. Happy reading. Bye.